Hello everyone and welcome. On this episode we will be creating and setting up a new Unity project. So stick around and let's get started. We will start by creating a new project. The name of it is going to be Castle.io and I'm going to save mine in this Unity folder right here. And of course make sure you choose the 2D option so your project is the same as mine. So let's go ahead and create this project. And the first thing I like to do once my Unity loads is I like to change my view around. So this is the default view and what I usually do is I change the hierarchy to the right. I also change the project to the right and I close the console. Now the project right here it has this favorites tab and this assets tab. I like to go to this button and change it from a two column layout to a one column column layout. And now this is going to be your view for the scene and this is going to be your view for the game. And once you do that, you can come here into this button that says default and you can save this layout and let's go ahead and save this as a horizontal layout. So if you want, you can later on just change to this horizontal layout just by clicking on that button. And now for a little tip, if you play your game as it is right now, you will see that not much changed. And Unity has a thing that if you do any changes to your game while you are on play mode, those changes will revert back when you stop playing. And as you can see, there's not much changing in the inspector when you enter play mode. So there's not much difference between play mode and not play mode. But we can change that. If you go here into edit preferences, you can see there's a colors tab. Click on that and you will see a play mode tint. Let's go ahead and change this to something, I don't know, purplish? bluish, uh, let's go purplish. Okay, now if you run the game you will see that your whole inspector will change to the, that color and this will give you a hint that you are on play mode and that your changes won't be saved once you stop. There's a nice tip for you. So now let's start with our project and the first thing we will do is create some folders. So let's go create new folder and let's call it scenes. And this will hold all our scenes, the game scene, menu scenes, and so on. Then let's go ahead and create a scripts folder. And this will hold all our scripts, the ones that run the game. We will also want a new sprite scene. And this will hold any images that we would want in our game. I also like to create a new folder for the prefabs. And prefabs I will talk about later, but just create a folder right now, we will use that later. With all those folders created, we can now save our scene by going File, Save Scene or Save Scenes and let's save our scene inside its folder. And let's go ahead and call it Scene. With our scene saved, let's go ahead and here on the hierarchy, let's right click and let's choose UI and let's choose image. And this will create a new canvas with an image as a child of it. It will also create a new event system. Don't worry about this, we will use this later. Now the canvas has some properties that you can change but we can leave them as they are right now. They don't change very much. If you double click on the canvas, we will see the representation of the canvas on the screen. And there, that little square is the image. But we do not want that image. We want our logo. So let's right click on the sprites folder and let's go import new asset. This will allow us to import assets. You can also drag them in from your computer 
into the un into Unity project and they will be automatically imported. But let's go ahead and import this logo. As you can see, this is a logo that I've made for this project. Here on the image game object, you can write you can click here on the source image and you can choose the logo. But as you can see, it's very stretched thin. So if you click preserve aspect and set to native size, it will change to the default size. But we want it on the top here. So let's go and click this a square right here and we can click this one but be sure to click on the shift key and on the alt key and that will shove it to the top. Also let's now remove the preserve aspect and let's give it a padding on the top of I don't know 30 pixel, uh, negative 30 pixels so it goes down or negative 10 I don't know eh, that, that works and let's change this to half of its size, so 300 by 50. And this will make a nice logo at the top. If you now go to the scene, you will see that the background color is blue. We do not want that. So let's go here into the main camera, click it, and you can see here that our flag is set to skybox. We want to change that from skybox to solid color, because we do not need a skybox, it will be only uh, adding to the game. However, this being a text adventure, it won't be much of a graphic intensive, but let's change it nonetheless. And if you click here on the background, let's choose a black background. But black is very, very <laughs> black. So let's go ahead and add some, I don't know, let's go to 25 on every on everyone, so 25 red, 25 blue or green and 25 blue and this will give us a nice grey, greyish black and this is what we want. So now save the scene and with that done we reach the end of this episode. This is the foundation for our text adventure and on the next episode we will be taking a look on creating and displaying text I will also show you the first segment of the story that we will be creating and we will be creating a simple state machine. So if you like this episode, give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more, comment for anything you'd like and I will see you on the next one. Cheers!